She's Andy Pura for Boxing Social, and I'm delighted to be joined by the white rhino, Dave Allen. Dave, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you, mate. How are you? It's good to hear, and yeah, I'm all good, thanks. You come down today, joined us. How's life been treating you since since your last fight? It's taken some time away since Bracamonte? Yeah, very well. You know, I'm having a bit of time off, just enjoying myself, enjoying life, keeping busy, keeping active-ish with other parts of my life. Not too much exercise. Um... It's been nice, just been enjoying the uh, fruits of my labour. I've got to ask you to stop shaking your leg a bit because I could be like, able to camera shaking. No, it's fine, Dave. Um, yeah, so Bracamonte, obviously, at the time, uh, you've those talks of you coming on the 22nd show, uh, which is happening this week, Watch Your Aura, and I know you had a lot of people over social media saying they'd like you to take some time off. You've obviously taken that decision. Just talk to me about that, the situation you found yourself in and why you obviously in the end decided to take a bit of time off going into the new year. Yeah, I could have boxed on the 22nd. I couldn't have boxed on the 8th as I wasn't medically cleared to fight with my ears. The 22nd I could have boxed, but... You know, I took some. Uh, I took some advice. Took some. I spoke to like Sir Rob Tebbert, my family, um, and we decided that we might as well wait till next year. You know, which I don't mind. I don't mind a few extra weeks of rest. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the 22nd as a boxing fan now. Looking forward to both shows. To be fair, um, we'll watch the Matchroom show on the night and the Warren show the day after. I'm looking forward to them both. Some good fights on both shows. We'll come on to the shows in a second, but if it wasn't for the, I don't really want to say interventions, but if it wasn't for the advice of people around you, do you feel that you would have still attempted to box on the show this year? Of course, yes. I love it. I love it. But, um, no, you know, um, I need a bit of time off. I'm tired. It's my advice this year. It's nice to have a bit of a rest. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think I've got another 18 months, two years left boxing, five or six fights. Let's, you know, like I've said, um, give myself the best chance of, of winning them and, and whatever else. And I think, the, I think the best thing for me to do now is just have a little bit of a rest and, you know, I want to start training early uh, 2019, ready for April 13th, you know, got plenty of time to get ready for that. No short notice excuses. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about what, what's, what's to come. It's interesting you say that 18 months, two years, because previously I've interviewed you, you said you see yourself fighting for another 10 years. Obviously now that's changed. What has prompted that decision to, to, to say this now? So you never know where your career could go and you could end up boxing for long. You could end up boxing for a short amount of time. Nobody knows what the future holds. But how come you've decided to come out and say this time scale for now? Well, so after the Yoko fight and then again after the Bracamonte fight, you know, I look in the mirror now and... Um, Got scars over my eyebrow, my nose is knackered, my tongue's too big for my mouth since the Ortiz fight. Tongue's full of tongue's all scarred. Um been in some hard fights. I've only had thirty two fights, how much in pro, but my fights as a pro, some of them, you know, they age you and they make you feel old and they make you feel a bit rough and you're scarred, your nose is knackered. My tongue don't fit in my mouth anymore. My tongue's that big. You know, people always say that like punch drunk and this and that, but from where I'm from, and the fact that my tongue's too big for my mouth now. So, um, I just want to get out of boxing. I want to get out of boxing as close to what I got into it, and that's that's what you aim for as a boxer. You aim to get in, get, in, get out as you get as you got in, you know. Um, and if you can make a bit of money and be successful as well, then that's obviously a bonus. You've obviously spoke about previously, you know, you're a very good defensive fighter, and it takes a lot for somebody to break you down, but at the same time, we saw in the Bracamonte fight, you did take a lot of punishment, as obviously yeah, did yeah. Uh, Bracamonte. It was a war, effectively. Is that something that going into the new year, you are going to try to put yourself in better shape, better condition, so that you aren't finding yourself in those types of fights and with those types of names, especially? They're a bit more, not necessarily of a walkover, but you'd get the result in a better fashion and a fashion which you'd probably expect yourself to have done. Of course, you know, I want to be in. Um I want to be in big 12 round fights now. From now to the end of my career, I want them all to be 12 rounders. I want them all to be like the Rocamonte fight. I just I shouldn't be in fights like that against opposition like that. If I'm in wars like that against the Browns, and then hopefully I go up another level and beat him against the Millers of the world, and that's fine, you know. Um, 
Like I said, I've got 14 weeks from January to prepare. Um, not two weeks, not a phone call two weeks. David, let's go in two weeks, you know. Um, I'm really excited. I've had a lovely bit of time off. Um, and I'm ready to, I'm, I am actually ready to start training, you know. I'm, I'm excited to get back to it. Um, I know I've got a big fight. As soon as, I, as soon as I come back, I've got a big fight. Really excited. Um, I won't say I'm, I don't want to get back in the gym today. But maybe to, maybe next week. I'm excited about. Now talk to me about your next fight. Obviously, it seems to be that it's going to be Lucas Brown. Have you got an update or whereabouts or how far down the line are we in terms of making that fight? I'm ninety percent sure it will be Lucas Brown at Wembley. I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure the next time I fight will be Wembley. And that's good enough for me. Because um, I know if I fight there, it's got to be a big fight. Um, people say I don't love boxing because I'm saying I want to be out of it. And it's like, I just want to be out of it healthy. I just want to get out of it healthy. I've been doing all the things I want to do, win all the things I want to do, make enough money to be comfortable so I can go on to the next stage of my life. I love boxing, but I know it's not forever. It can't be forever. I used to think I'd do it forever, but you can't. Um, I wish I could. Because I'm missing it already. I wish I was fighting on Saturday. So I love it. I love. Um, I love being. In, I love the big stage. I love it. I love putting that show on. Yeah, not, not, not just in the fighting sense. I love the way in the workout, the press conference. I love being around everybody and trying you to. Just, you just enjoy fight week. Yeah, I love entertaining. And I love the fight. I love everything about it. So I miss it. I'm missing it already. I've not fought for six weeks. I'm already missing it. But you know, it can't. It can't go on forever. So. So yeah, I am um, just gonna enjoy. However long I've got left. Obviously, you know, this year you fought Tony Yoka before having. You, obviously, I know you fought before that, but you, after the Yoka defeat, you won three fights on the bounce. Nick Webb, uh, Sammy Aniba, and obviously Bracamonte. Say if Brown happens and you're victorious in that one, talk to me about a plan in terms of what you're hoping to achieve, not just necessarily in the year, but for the, the, this next five or six fights that you've said that you see yourself having. Well, hopefully, Brown is next. We'll beat Brown. I then want to go straight on to the next biggest fight. You know, I've had a little talk about plans. You know, Brown then Miller was suggested, which is fine. You know, I'm open for anything. I watched Luis Ortiz in my 11 fight. So whoever, whoever can get it, will get it. And when I'm 100% fit and on my game, at the very least, I can, I can, um, I can give people a hard night. Anyone a hard night, I believe. So. So yeah, next year it's going to be a good year, you know. I'm really confident, really happy in a good place. Everything, Everything's all good. Everything's fantastically good, to be fair. Everything's really well. I'm actually quite happy, yeah. It's great to hear, and it's great to just see you just with a smile on your face, just enjoying your life, Dave. Yeah, you know, it's nice. Um, got myself to a place now where I'm just comfortable in every aspect. I'm just, I'm just happy, and I think... You know, I'll show hopefully with my boxing and with my training, you know, people say you don't train very hard. I find it very hard to train sometimes. Due to different reasons, due to the fact that sometimes I'm very hard work as a human being. Um putting 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 a week, putting six, seven weeks together without having a funny week or two is difficult, but I'm at a point in my life now where I'm ready to show everyone, you know, I'm not gonna talk too much about it, we'll see. We'll see April thirty, we'll see. You know, and then people, everyone can make, make their minds up then. I'm about to come on to watch Zora, but you just mentioned train. I know you was with uh, Adam Booth for a few days. Yeah. What was the situation there? I know you've decided to uh, stick with Mick now. So how come you've taken that option? You know, me and, me and Mick have been together from near the beginning. And we're going to see it through to the end. That's, that's it, effectively. My next fight is a big fight. I'm not going to... not going to... Um, not giving him that opportunity to, to go into that big fight with me. You know, it's a lot of money to me, it's a lot of money to him as well. I'm not going to just say, nah, that's it now, we, we've got here, we'll go with the rest of that. That's not how I'm going to do it. A few other reasons why as well, um, which I'm not going to go into. Not Nothing negative towards anybody, just things that, um, everything I do has to be, first and foremost, in my best interest. And then secondly, because I want to see things through with Mick to the end. And that's what we're going to do. So we'll, we'll show you. I can't wait for April 13th. I wish April 13th, not tomorrow, because I'm not in the shape to show you, but I wish it was sooner because 
I am. Um, I really am going to shock a lot of people next year. I'm, I, I know. I know. I can feel it. I know it. I'm ready to do it. It's great to see you in such a confident mood, Dave. But obviously, this weekend we have got a couple of fights coming up. Well, a couple of cards, I should say, coming up. Start off with Watchizora, the heavyweights, one of your ex-opponents, Dillian. How are you seeing the Watchizora fight going and what are your thoughts on the rematch? I'm inspiring Dylan for the fight. He's, he's really fit. He's got himself in just tremendous condition now. He's super fit. Um, I think he wins. I think the Takam fight... Um, Takam Chizora, Takam was winning the fight really comfortably. He kind of punched himself out and Chizora took over and won. And I think that may have flattered him a little bit. Chizora is going to have to be, um, he's going to have to be as improved as as David Hayes making out is if he's going to have a chance in this fight. Because still on white, the improvement he's shown since the first fight is is unbelievable. We've also got David Price on the undercard, another heavyweight clash there. We're going in with Tom Little. What are your thoughts on that one? I am um, looking at it on paper, David Price. I think David Price is three to one on. I think now I don't I don't really know either man. I met David Price once, but for me David Price should be like one to one to ten on. He's an Olympic bronze medalist. He, he went through British level at ease, and I'm not saying I'm above British level. I probably, I'm probably I'm quintessentially Brit. I am. I'm sat here now. Like, I might as well have British level stamps on my forehead. Most would say, but. He went through McDermott Sexton like a like a hot knife through a butter, um, and on paper, really, he should do the same to Tom Little, you know. Um, Tom Little's a very gay man, though, and if Price's confidence is is gone, then Tom Little is game enough and to 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 take advantage of that. But you know, on paper, realistically, Price should win. And the other card up in Manchester, we have Josh Warrington and Carl Frampton clashing for the IBF featherweight world title. What are your thoughts on that one? I, I kind of think Warrington will win. I think Warrington's a bit fresher, bigger, fresher, um, stronger man. I don't think Frampton is a fighter that he once was. I love Carl Frampton. He beat him at table tennis. But, you know, I, I'm, I, re I admire him as a man as, as much as I do as a fighter. Um, I think that's a tremendous fight. I will be watching the, the, the matchroom show because the White Zora fight for me, I'm really intrigued and interested by it and I've got a personal interest in it. Not because I want to fight him or anything, just because Dylan's a friend. And, but, 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 but the Warren show is very good. The Heffron-Williams fight I'm intrigued by. Uh, the Rosales-Edwards fight we're intrigued by. Um, good night of boxing. Just a shame that they're both on the same night. Well, Dave, I know you're a busy man and you've got other things on today, so thanks for speaking to me and thanks for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you.